The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not, but the real people who lived this story, they believe it. They know. They took that one step beyond. From the very earliest days, the sea and the unknown have been linked in men's minds. The strange, fire-breathing monsters with which primitive mapmakers filled in the unknown areas have proved to be figments of their imagination. Most of the strange tales of the sea have yielded quite reasonable explanations. But others are part of that irreducible mystery for which every man is free to devise his own explanation. Devise one, that is, if he can. As per my instructions, I've kept the captain under closest surveillance. Mm. Observation. Mr. Blake? Mr. Blake, you got ten minutes, Mr. Blake. You want some coffee? Yes, come on in. Well, I figured you could use some of this before you go on watch. Well, you figured right, Cookie. How we doing? Black lightning, smooth as silk, since we have the sea at our back. Since what? Well, it's been like that since, well, just about midnight. Is anything wrong? What's the matter? No. Must be some reason. I don't know. Except maybe the captain. Maybe the captain what? Nothing. Well, well, everybody knows about the captain. He's old. Yes, he is. Go down to his cabin, give him my compliments, and ask him if he'd be kind enough to meet me on deck. Yes, sir. And Cookie. Sir? Don't mention this to anybody. Very well, sir. what you read. I'm only the mate, but I'd like to be informed when the course has been changed. What are you talking about? Nobody's changed the course. We've been west by northwest for the last four hours. Well, of course we have. You know how far off course that takes us? I wouldn't know. I'm not the navigator. Well, just try to remember that. I'll try to remember, Mr. Blake. You just try to remember what course you put down and don't blame other people. I put down. Take a look. When I go on watch, I'm not supposed to ask who set the course. I'm just supposed to see the helmsman steers the course that's on that board, and that's just what I've done. Ford will tell you. He's had the wheel the whole watch. He'll tell you that board read west by northwest when we came on. That's impossible. I gave the order myself. And the next time, be more careful when you go around. Don't tell me to be more careful. You asked to see me, mate? What is it? Captain, our course has been changed. So I see. Change the course to south by southwest, Helsman! South by southwest. Aye, aye, sir. May I remind you, Mr. Blake, that while the duties of the mate on this vessel are also the duties of the navigator, those duties are executed at the approval of the captain. 
who is to be consulted prior to a change in course. Captain, we've been west by northwest for the last four hours. Four hours? Upon whose authority did you do such no a thing? No authority. I didn't... That's enough! All I want to hear from you is why you saw fit to change my vessel's course. I never changed that course. Then who did? Captain, somebody sneaked in and put a new course on the board. Probably during the last change of watch. It's possible. I'll do, Mr. Dibble. Aye, right, sir. Meaning it's also possible that I'm a liar. You said it, Mr. Blake, not I. But you meant it. Perhaps, Mr. Blake. Well, I resent that. You can resent it all you like. But while you're resenting it, you'll keep your mouth shut. And that's an order, Mr. Blake. A very... An order! Captain! Yes! We'll be calm. Not a breath of wind. That's not necessary yet, Mr. Blake. changed our course, my compliments. Not only have we lost the wind, we found ice. Ice? Where? Can't you feel it, Mr. Blake? It's all around us. Ice off the port bow! Ice off the port bow! Now do you feel it, Mr. Blake? this idiotic trick made one little mistake after he finished with his mutinous joke he forgot to put the chalk back see he probably was so thrilled with putting one over on the old captain that he got carried away and in the excitement he dropped the chalk in his pocket now since we've got nothing better to do we'll have a little court of inquiry Right here. Your pockets. Empty them out right here. Be quick about it. And turn the linings out so I can see that they're empty. Do you hear me, Mr. Blake? Yes, sir. Then move. I don't think it's a lawful order, Captain. You don't? An officer has no right to inspect a brother officer's private property. You know, you may be right. But surely you're aware that even if an order is unlawful, it still must be obeyed. Your remedy is to take it up with higher authority when we reach port. You have a legal right to refuse to obey only such unlawful orders as you believe menace the safety of the ship. Are you aware of that? I am. And surely you do not believe that my exercising my curiosity in this way, even if unlawful, menaces the safety of the ship. Well, do you? No, sir. Then I order you to empty your pockets on this table right now. All right. All right, pick it up. Every man not actually on duty assembled on the deck at once. Mr. Dibble, you will inspect the contents of the pockets of every man on duty. Get going, brother. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye, sir. You took a key out. This certifies that Walter Blake is a security officer for the Triport Shipping Company and is authorized to investigate conditions aboard the bark Triport Queen. And 
is so odd. Pick it up. In other words, you're a spy. Don't you think I can guess what conditions you're investigating? Me, that's what. Look, it's nothing personal. But you've had cargo damage, and you've been late. Bad weather, bad luck. Three trips out of six. Four trips out of seven. You're forgetting our present situation, Mr. Wick. Well, there must be some reason. Oh, surely. There always has to be a reason. Everything has to fit together. Uh, maybe that's true on dry land. But there are things that happen at sea that just don't have any reason. Like how our course was changed? Maybe. You care to empty your pockets, Captain? You're hesitating. Are you sure? Could you have done it and forgotten about it? You see any chalk there? Hmm? Now there? Oh, perhaps you think I've hidden it. Hmm? Now go ahead, look. Look. No. I may be an old man. And perhaps I forget things now and then, but I keep my ship on course. Unless some cheap company spy is so anxious to turn in a nice fat report that he doesn't mind tricking me. Hmm? That's not my handwriting. Here, look, I'll show you. You could have had somebody else do it for you. You can put that in your report. You can say that I think people are picking on me. Now, there's lots of us old ones that think that. Ah, oh, no doubt. Your report will put me on the beach. But you won't write it until you reach port. Until then, you're my first mate and subject to my orders. Which are to get out of here and help round up the crew. Get on with it. Yes, sir. What have you checked? Check the forward hold and galley. I'll take this hatch. Anybody working down there? said the crew's assembled on the stern, all that aren't working. All of them? That's what he said, all present are accounted for. Are you coming? Yeah, in a moment. Mr. Blake! Mr. Blake, would you mind joining us topside? Captain, would you come down here? You may not have to search through any more pockets. I think we've got a stowaway down here. If this is some kind of a trick, Mr. Where'd you come from? What's your name? 
Mm. Speak up. You speak English? Maybe he's got papers on him. Mm. Put your hands up in the air and turn around. What do you got in your hand? Open it. Open it. It's the chalk. You changed that course. Why? Speak up! Why did you change that course? We've got a win, Captain. We're underway. Put the irons on him, Mr. Blake. Keep a sharp lookout for ice! them. We're away! Where are you? Keep shouting! We'll find you! What would you do, Mr. Blake? Shall we try and save them? Of course. You sure? There's ice all around us. Could damage the vessel or worse. What would the company advise in such a matter? It's your ship, Captain. All right, Mr. Blake. Launch the workboat. Aye, aye, sir. Close enough. Get the workboat over the side. Get the workboat over the side! Be quick! Queen. Where are the rest of your men? God knows. She went down fast. That's all that's left. What about him? Navigator. He died almost immediately. Well, pull him aboard. He's entitled to a decent burial. Cut him loose, quick!
matter. Then no! So break! What do you think's the matter? This lad hasn't been to sea for years like you and me. He drags a body from the water and it takes the billy out of him. That's right, isn't it, Mr. Brick? Isn't that it? Isn't that it? Mr. Dibble, I want you to take these men below and get them some dry clothes and some hot food. Aye, aye, sir. Same man. Yes. He was dead. Dead for hours. Yes. The course was changed. Men's lives were saved. Do you want a reason, Mr. Blake? Dry land reason. I don't have one. You saw him. What did you think? Well, I think... I thought that the company was right. That I was a very old man. But you're quite a young man. And you saw him, too. be some explanation, some answer. And if there is no answer, what do you do, Mr. Blake? But I'm sure by the time you hand in your report, you will have found an answer to satisfy the gentleman in Boston. Report? What report, Captain? Flying Eagle went down here, off the tip of Greenland. At that time, the Triport Queen was here and headed for Boston. Now, exactly what happened to make the Queen change her course? Well, parapsychologists, that is, those whose profession is the study of psychic processes, will tell you that at the instant of death, the navigator of the stricken vessel somehow managed to do something to save the lives of his shipmates. Or was the course on the blackboard a coincidence and the stowaway an hallucination? Who knows? In any event, the fact is that three men who otherwise would have perished were saved. In a moment, a hint about next week. For a long time, Sylvia Ackroyd was a lonely, neglected woman. Then suddenly, inexplicably, she wasn't lonely anymore, for she met a most amazing companion. You'll meet him next week. Ooh.